Good morning. Uh, everyone expects me to talk about NIPCC. Well, I fooled them. I'm going to talk about a new subject. I'm going to talk about ice ages and what to do about them. This is a very serious matter. Warming is not serious. We can stand warming, particularly if you live in Canada or in Siberia. And besides, warming is mainly in the winter and at night. So instead of minus 40 degrees, you have minus 35 degrees. Oh, big deal. <laughs> Ice ages are serious. Can I have slides, please? Oh, here we are. Next one. There are cool two kinds of ice ages, major ones and little ones. The major ones come every 100,000 years, controlled by astronomical factors. Not much we can do about those. And the little ice ages are superimposed, and they come about every 1,000 to 1,500 years. We've written about that. The major ice ages nearly wiped out humanity, at least they did in Europe. They wiped out the Neanderthals. <laughs> the little ice ages are not as severe, but they are immensely damaging. They will put a big dent into civilization as we know it. And many millions of people will die as a result. So what can we do about them? Next slide. Here is uh, ice core data from the Antarctic. And you'll see the little ice ages here. You see the medieval warming, the Roman warming, and this thing is called L, that's the Minoan warming, about every 1,500 years. In between, you see a lot of cooling. And the most recent ice age I don't know if this, this works. The green button. Oh, here. Ah, the most recent ice age, you see, is quite, quite severe. And this next slide is by my friend Dietrich Kölle from Munich. And his guess is that we're already approaching the little ice age, the next little ice age. That's the green curve. And it shows a warming, a cooling during the 21st century, then a slight recovery, and then a real strong cooling. Oops. Bob? Bob Carter? Hello. Please get out of the way. <laughs> no. So that's his guess. Everybody has a guess as to when the warming comes, but it's a matter of decades. It may, we may already have started. And we need to do something about it. Uh, the uh, next slide. This shows the cycles, the 100,000 year, 100, year cycles, also from my friend Dietrich Kölle, that accounts for the, a lot of German uh, terminology in there, but you see here the most recent ice age, uh, uh, the global, the minimum at 18,000 years ago, and the recovery into what we call the Holocene. We're now in the Holocene. How long will it last? We don't know. We may already be in the first phases of the ice age. Notice that the ice age. Uh, the big ice ages uh, start slowly, then they recover, and then they really get cold, and then they reach a bottom. That seems to be the pattern. And then there's a very sudden recovery. We don't understand the reasons for these changes. The control of the ice ages, the timing control, is well understood. Next slide shows uh, there's, first of all, the Earth orbit eccentricity. Then there is the uh, axis of rotation, which oscillates back and forth. And then there is the next slide, shows the 
precession of this axis of rotation. At one time, the axis was pointing to the polar star. It's slightly off now, and it'll be off at, by about in 20,000 years from now, it'll point to Vega. So these are things that we can do very little about. However, the way in which the Ice Age starts, we're talking about the big Ice Ages, uh, apparently they uh, come on by having a snowfield that survives the summer. So we can spot those snowfields from satellites, and we can. We might be able to do something about it like putting soot on them from a duster plane and having the sun do the work, having the sun melt the snow during the summer and maybe uh, prevent the ice age from ever happening. It's a thought, but there may be better ways. Next slide. Uh, this shows the various cycles. The top one is the eccentricity cycle, which is has about a 100,000 year period. Then there's the uh, inclination cycle, then there's the precession cycle. Sorry, this is the precession cycle, and this is the inclination cycle. And then when you superimpose them all, you get the next slide, and this is someone's guess as to what is happening. Here's where we are now. You see, we're expecting the big ice age to come uh, maybe in 20,000 years it'll reach bottom. There's nothing we need to worry about immediately. <laughs> but we, <laughs> uh, it's something we should be aware of, and it would be nice to know uh, what is happening and how we can overcome it. It's a matter of research. Uh, the, these are the big ice ages. The, the little ones produced by the sun are even more mysterious. Craig Lowley and I have written about this, particularly uh, during the Holocene, and apparently they exist, as I showed you in one of the earlier slides. And uh, our best idea that we've come up with is that we need to use the greenhouse effect. We need to use the sun to overcome those little ice ages. How to use the greenhouse effect, not CO2. That's not the way to do it. Uh, the best way is to create artificial contrails using water vapor, using water mist, and creating ice crystals up in the lower stratosphere. It's a safe method. It imposes le uh, low risk, and it is reversible. So we're looking for methods that are low cost and low risk, and geoengineering, of which I've always been very skeptical, and many people are, with good reason, may make some sense when we combat cooling. It doesn't make any sense when we try to combat warming. Next slide. Our mitigation uh, for the major glaciations the Milankovic glaciations, we need to look for a trigger, and the trigger, as I mentioned earlier, is to spot the persistent snow fields and spread soot on them. The little ice ages are very hard to combat, uh, but they may be immediately, they may be an immediate problem, and I recommend all kinds of experiments and tests to see what is the best method to approach this. Last slide, geoengineering. Tests, I think, are essential. We need to validate all the calculations. I think the costs are minor. The risks are very small, negligible. With, it's time to set up an international project. Actually, it's time to find someone to run a project. We're looking for postdocs, young men in, or women in their 40s or 50s. We're looking for a real challenge and are able to raise some funds from the government to run tests. Because this is not 
going to be cheap, but it is very important. One word about ice ages. We have direct evidence from historic records. We have direct evidence from historic records how damaging the Little Ice Ages are. We know from paleo records from archaeology about the Milankovitch Ice Age, which wiped out the Neanderthals. If another one of those comes along, heaven help humanity. So if you want to save humanity, get in at the bottom and start in at the ground floor. I'm appealing to everyone in the audience here to volunteer for this job. I hope you'll take it on. Thank you. Thank you.